It's one that's actually format. It looks like it's format. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to read one that's from the same site, Michelle. It's just called Stay Tuned. It's got the same, same rating level almost. It's 8.67. So here we go. This one's called Stay Tuned, written by Paige Turner. And Paige Turner. Ha, ha. Michelle the Kuhn mentions, okay. I hope all my night crawlers feel as good as I do this evening. The fact that we have 317 people in chat is mind-boggling enough. But if you would have told me, if you would have told me we'd eventually hit 10,000 subs, 10,000 subs even a year ago, I wouldn't have believed it. That be that being said, I want to offer a quick thank you to everyone and a new welcome to our big welcome to our newcomers. Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, it was also great to see a positive response to a story of a story of strife. It's been a long time since I was that nervous about a premiere, but with the encouragement from family and friends, I decided to take a chance. Over the next few months, I'll see if we can get another one up. Story the stories are doing really well. Um, as for tonight, it's time for our live Sunday classic. This week, I've modernized the monkey paw. It's one of my personal favorites, and I've had hundreds of requests. Would you would you make a wish with the paw? Let me know in the comments. Since everyone's eager to get started, here we go. That was a gunshot. What the? That was a gunshot, a woman screaming, and a chair falling over. Amber! Footsteps running away with a dirt bike taking off. And dead air. Static. Several weeks later. Ice clinking. Ching, 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 ching. For those of us who don't, don't use Twitter, I'm sure you've been wondering just what the fuck. Me too. Oh, life is such a bitch, ain't she? To put, to put simply, Amber is dead. I'm now a widower. So, dips drink. Yep, those sounds were gunshots. Cameras, cameras recorded the whole goddamn thing. The shooter was a man, tall, leather motorcycle outfit. Huge black helmet with a visor. Said something about, I'll be back. Still ain't caught this some bitch. I know what you're thinking, and Turner remains locked away, snug as a poisonous bug. But please, are the writing. I... How these get ranked so high when the writing is so poor. <laughs> but please, are come combing through her her correspondence to see if she's involved. Apparently, she has been fo has a following of sickos who enjoyed her work. Had I known sharing my story would get her famous, I'd never, not for a million subs, not ever, but for two million. Maybe. Fucking bitch, pours drink. Look, look, look. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, I'm off the wagon. The wagon's fucking dead. What? He's drinking again? After his... Partner got murdered. What? What? Chugs. A very large cup of liquor. I don't know when I'll post what, but since the boys are staying with my sister, I got drunk enough to tell you what happened last night. Yeah, because I'm and no one sub why I'm doing this because you know that million subs thing. I was totally serious about. I'd never like tell this story that I'm telling right now for a million subs. But for 1500 or, or, you know, if you guys want to send me some, like, you know, underwear or something, that'd be awesome. Um, um, uh, you'll, you'll remember the kids were visiting my parents in Florida. Thank goodness. Thank, thank goodness they weren't here. Because that would have just added to the story. It made it all the more traumatic and more marketable. Ren mentions, did I come back to a gag reflex? <laughs> that's a gag reflex friend they're very different sounds that's when you put something way too deep in your throat michelle the kuhn mentions nope creepy pasta amber was downstairs with a glass of wine in a movie watching the movie and drinking the wine in case anyone had questions in the audience or the people who are a little slow waiting me for to finish waiting for me to finish that stream i see the bastard walked his bike down the driveway, opened fire into the front door of the house, then drove away. Monsters are real. And that's with a capital M, everyone. Capital M. Monsters. They're real. Never doubt it. Eddie was in the upstairs hall hallway, outside, waiting outside my door, and judging by the empty wine glass, we think Amper was probably going for a refill when it happened. Because she was just a drunk slut all the time. Oh, wait, did I say that out loud? I meant, no, she was, she was thirsty. 
Amber was thirsty. She was so thirsty. Online constantly. The bullet tore through her chest and she bled onto the, the floor right in front of me. I don't know, I, but I, because I, I teleported from upstairs where I was streaming to downstairs where she was dying instantly. The blood just took so long to come out of her chest. It was so thick. It was like ketchup. You know, ketchup when you leave it out for like a week and it starts to grow the bacteria that everybody thinks doesn't grow in ketchup, but does grow in ketchup when you don't refrigerate ketchup. And then people eat it and they get sick and they blame it on the food, not the ketchup, because the ketchup still tastes the same. Yeah, that, that kind of thick. Everything is a blur after that. I don't think I could remember it if I tried. Ren mentions, wait, is that a thing? <laughs> it's creepypasta, Ren. You decide. Orchid mentions, yeah. You decide. Everything is a blur to me after that. I don't think I could remember if I tried. It's not like I was sober for any of it. Because, you know, I was on the wagon then. But now I'm off the wagon. But I wasn't sober when I was on the wagon. So what the fuck does off the wagon even mean, really, when you think about it? This wagon concept? I don't really understand what it means, but I threw it in the story here because I thought you guys could relate. Yeah, just threw it in there. Because the wagon thing sounded good. I'm off the fucking wagon, I said earlier. Remember that? Remember that? That was the creepy part of the story, that there even was a wagon. What wagon? Really, what wagon? Telling the boys is the worst thing I'll ever do in my life, other than getting back on that wagon. And then the funeral. God, the funeral was beyond anything I can ever imagine. Up giving up alcohol. We all must endure planning a loved one's funeral at some point, but I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. So many tedious details. So much alcohol. None of that matters anymore, though. Because I'm alone making money selling subscriptions by telling this story on the internet. Do you all hear? I'm glad you're here. The sub button's in the bottom right down there. If you're looking for it, there's a donation, donation button below also. So feel free. It's a hard story to tell. Well, I'm going to tell it. I can make it. For another three more subs. Any three more subs? Is, this, is there more subs coming for the story? No. Fine, I'll finish the story. Fine. Whatever. Have it your way. I'm on a first name basis with the police detectives Andy and Juan are running the investigation. They're good men, but I lost hope, lost hope of catching the prick early on. The dirt bike was abandoned in a parking lot across the state line, but he had no tangible leads. I mean, it was a dirt bike, for God's sakes. Tangibility has nothing to do with it. I mean, who drives a dirt bike and gets away? It sounds like a fucking chainsaw coming down the road at 4 a.m. I mean, really, they're hard to track. Really hard to track. Now it's two weeks later, and we have no fingerprints, no DNA, no suspects, except for a dirt bike. With ass sweat all over it. But that'll never be investigated correctly. No one knows how to no one knows how to figure out how to get the DNA out of ass sweat. I've had that technology available to me for a decade. But the scientists all say I'm making it up. They say it was, it's fake science. Pseudoscience, they tell me. Ass sweat can't be analyzed for DNA. They're wrong. They're all wrong. Someday. After I get five more subs. I'll reveal the secrets of ass sweat. I'll happily spend the rest of my life in jail if I could just Michelle get my hands on Turner. Mentions ass sweat, iron mouse. Exactly, ass sweat, iron mouse. A lot of iron mouse ass sweat. Yeah, fuzzy ass sweat. I'm. I'll happily spend the rest of my life in jail if I could just get my hands on Turner, but that'll never happen. Going to jail or getting my hands on Turner either. Bitch isn't even in the same state anymore, and I don't even know how to drive. How am I going to get across state lines? Right? If I only had 50 more subs, I could afford a car. Anybody? Anybody? No? Okay. I don't care what the cops do or don't find. She is involved. You guys see that, right? Did I tell you that her lawyer tried to contact me on her behalf? Said she wanted to apologize? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, such a drunk. Oh, I spilled my I spilled my drink now. Believe that I'm drunk and holding a glass, a fragile glass full of liquid. What could go wrong, right? Damn it, Ed. Oh, well, that's it. Anyways, now, you know, I'm not sure when I'll be back, but I'll update on Twitter in a few days. If I get more subs, 
remember what a sub button is and the donation buttons are there. I'll catch you later. And see. Three weeks later. Hello, Nightcrawlers. It's, I know it's early, but there are reasons for that. I've got subs. <laughs> Thank you for your unwavering support and patience. Your condolences and well wishes have been immeasurable comfort and have purchased me all the liquor I can drink for the last three weeks. Thank you. I'd best to do this during school hours. What? It's best to do this during school hours, for now at least. I want to be sober. And while I've been better since the boys came home, I still can't trust myself not to drink because I'm on the wagon. I have an update on the investigation. Lady Nopingham, made up name obviously, and Lily Livers, second made up name obviously, spoke to a few friends and now the online sleuthing community is investigating our case. And we know how good the online sleuthing community is. Do you remember that pipe bomb incident in Boston where they accused the wrong person and there was a raid on them? Yeah, that's Reddit. Go Reddit. These guys are A class and each one has solved multiple murders. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, they have. Yeah, they have. Their channels are linked in the description. I hope you check them out. Subscribe to them too because they're sponsoring this. And if they, you don't sub to them, they don't sub to me. It's a big pyramid scheme. And you're at the bottom. Just pay your money and move on. Honestly, at first, I was upset. And the detectives were furious. You know how I feel about strangers poking around my personal life. I just... Why have them poke around in my personal life when I could just share it all right here on the air? I mean... I watched the ketchup ooze out of my wife on the floor and talked about my children's grief on, on public radio. On the public radio. Pub, ha, ha, ha. That was a different show. I was public radio. That was... <laughs> that was back on AM 723. I remember that. Oh, God. The AM radio days. Oh. So many things I said and regret. At least it's not well recorded like the internet. Yeah. Any, oh, sorry, what was, I, what was I talking again? Oh, I don't like people poking around in my personal life. Can you see the sincerity on my face? Yeah, right. Plus, I was certain they wouldn't find anything... Because there wasn't stuff to find, but I'd hit it pretty well. But then they did. There's a moment when the asshole tilts his head to reveal a small neck tattoo. But we didn't get a decent image. Sleuth scope Steve's. Steve could. After a few days on the internet, someone emailed a valid tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From the internet. Where all the best information comes from. Casey Devon and his girlfriend saw the same weird symbol on a busboy in Kalamazoo. Two people with the same tattoo. Lock them up. They were in a dive bar on the way home to Indiana and happened to see Steve's video the night before. What are the odds? Finally, something went our way. The detectives thanked Steve for his tip, but I still wanted him off the case. I, on the other hand, was sold. I welcome and thank their community from the bottom of my dead, shredded heart. Because, you know, your sympathy will get me more subs. So if you could sub below, you know, there's the button over here, somewhere down there. There's a donation button over here. Yeah, you do that. It'll help my dead, shredded heart recover. Maybe. Will happiness get me more subs if, I, if, I, if I'm happy while I get more subs? If I ask my dead wife to come on the show, will, she, will that help? No. Pictures? If I show pictures of my trauma? Is just talking about it not enough to any pictures? Would you like my wife's corpse? I can bring a picture from that. I, I have that. I've, I've hung on to it just in case, you know, viewership goes down. But anyway, oh, sorry. Wait, wait, what? Back to, oh, sorry. I'm telling a story here. I'm telling a story. Let me get back to it. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the, my, my, my dead shredded heart. Yes, that was it. My renewed hope for catching this bastard has given me more than one reason to wake up in the morning. Juan, 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 Juan. Juan and Andy ran a background check on the man. Davey Richardson is a convicted felon who's worked at the Gorilla Grill for two years. You know what? Hiring convicted felons? I mean, right, who would do that? You know, people have already served their time and are supposed to be forgiven for their crimes. We, we, we certainly have to keep punishing them forever. You know, it, 
you come out of prison, you know, your record's wiped clean. Ha! Never. 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 The rest of their lives, they will be paying for that. We all know it. So, you know, we label them with convicting felons. Um, is, this a, is this a political channel? No, it was a creepy, creepy, no, sorry, creepy pasta. Sorry. <laughs> yes. There's a convicted felon who worked at the Gorilla Girl for two years. He's obviously guilty. Obviously guilty because he's done something wrong in the past. They weren't eager to share more, but I did learn he did 10 years for armed robbery and sexual assault. Uh-huh. So he certainly did this drive-by shooting of my wife. Girlfriend, mistress. We don't really clarify whether that is. There was no apparent correspondence between him or Paige, but that doesn't mean anything. Even if they did exchange letters, he could still have done it because of her. Like some kind of psychotic tribute. Since his release, he hadn't caused trouble. His parole officer con considers him re rehabilitated. But the rest of the country doesn't. The rest of the world doesn't. I certainly don't. And nor should you. People watching my radio show. But I feel like this is the guy. I feel it in my bones. My dead, shredded, heart-laden bones. I think Eddie can sense it too. He's been in better spirits the last few days. His depression runs as deep as our own. Each night he crawls on her, si on her side of the bed, often whimpering softly in his dreams, just like Daddy. <laughs> we aren't ashamed of our man cuddles. The nights are lonely and cold and endless. Is, is this a... I'm thinking my story might be transitioning into an OnlyFans section here. Connor is still sleeping in the cot in Aiden's room. It's so hard to see them suffer. It's so hard. It's so hard to see them suffer. It's, it's where the dot dot dots are that really matter in some of these sentences. <laughs> They're having terrible nightmares, but nothing short of cuddles seems to help. Sorry, I have a hard time staying on point these days. The detectives interviewed Davey. He prattled off a worthless alibi, but it only took two hours to tear it apart. You know, under pressured interrogation, someone making up something just to get it to be over with. It's like waterboarding, you know, torture, that kind of stuff, how it always works. You know, because people just don't want to get out of the situation will say whatever you need them to say. But yeah, he's totally guilty. He, at that point, they secured a search warrant. Unfortunately, no one was home. Like myself, you probably weren't surprised. But the plain clothed officers responsible for watching him were very surprised. Indeed, they were that day. They were so surprised. This is not a friendly neighborhood where civilians are eager to help the police. The few who spoke only did so to further impede the investigation. That was three days ago. And no one has seen or heard from Davy since. In fact, we hadn't even heard of Davy in this story until seconds ago. So, who would possibly know where he is? With the help of Steve and his friends, there's hope that... Steve. Remember Steve? This is Steve from Reddit. Steve from Reddit's on this. Steve from Reddit is going to solve my girlfriend, wife's mistress murder and the ketchup that she bled all over the floor at my feet. Fucking tragedy. There's hope they'll be spotted soon. We're certainly f fairly certain he fled the state. The state border is like a wall. It's a motherfucking wall. No one can cross it. But the internet's reach is limitless. Yes. Yes, internet. You, internet, will solve this crime for me. Eventually, he must show his face somewhere. Somewhere. And we'll find him. Thanks again for taking the time to listen. If you can spare a moment, check out these links below. Subscribe and follow. We appreciate every share. You know when it comes, you know you never know when it'll reach that one person who could help. Hopefully, I'll be back to push at you again soon. Because I'm a pusher. Mm -hmm. Scene cut. Two days later. Dot dot dot. It feels weird to record this offline, but I can't risk Turner hearing it, and I've come to rely on this outlet. I'm not sure when you'll actually really see this, but it's been two days since my last stream. I hope these don't become legitimate lost tapes, 
But if someone finds these years later, it's absolutely because I'm dead. <sighs> it's happened. She's out. She's escaped. How the hell does someone escape Max Security Psych Ward in real life? With help, for starters, it was Davey, right? It all lines up. It must be him. His next felon, after all. We know how they are. We fir My first instinct was to ship the boys back to Florida. But what if she went there instead? It would be 2,000 miles away. Completely useless. Why don't I go too, you ask? Well, that's a great question. What happens when she follows us and it gets my parents killed as well? When I'm finished here, we're going to go to a hotel. Though it's only a temporary solution. Because well, I can't afford more than six nights at a hotel. Because you guys haven't subscribed. I'm still at 14 subscribers. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure why this story and my dead wife isn't bringing in more subscribers. I, I will post the pictures. Don't, I, if, if that's what I have to do to get 13,000 subs, I, I need 13,000 subs so I can buy the car I want. I mean, my wife bled out for this car. Don't you want to see me drive the car? I'll paint it the color of ketchup. I will. For you. All of you. The cheapest place I could allow, that would allow dogs is more than we can afford. And you know, when it comes down to it, the dogs are more important than finding my wife's murderer. If I had to choose between giving up my dogs or finding who killed my wife and seeking vengeance, fuck my wife. The dogs stay. The dogs stay. You're probably thinking I'd leave the dogs. No, I won't. Ever. My wife was disloyal. My dogs are not. But with help from family, we have funds for a week stay. If they don't find Turner before that, I don't know what we're going to do. We'd have to give up the dogs. And we all know where that's going to go. I will not give up those dogs. Ever. I'll be watching the cameras nonstop and some police officers will be inside, hopefully making it look like we're home. Even if they drove us to the hotel so both vehicles would be there. Now, you see why I couldn't record live. Because I'm in a hideout. Is this getting more subs? Am I getting more subs because of this? Because I'm in a hideout? That sounds mysterious, right? Suspicious and like, you know, mystery. Like creepy pasta kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, if somebody's writing all this down so we can share this story. Because I, I think there's a site that lets me save all this stuff. So I'll share it to people later. Find it later. If anyone has that bookmark, just mail it to me. Just put it in chat. Thanks. Why can't this be over? Why can't we grieve in peace? Why do I keep bringing this up on the internet? Why do I keep presenting more and more information about this story like I'm finding stuff out and don't have all this information available to me right at the beginning? Hasn't she taken enough? What's the price for not narrating a terrible story? I think that price is peace, silence, solace, serenity. But that's not something I want. I want the chaos, the revelry, the dismissal. All of that. Now subscribe below, please. I'll send her my own ear in a box, all Van Gogh style, if I thought it would appraise her. If two boys weren't depending on me, I would have broken long ago. Sometimes I dream of disappearing into the forest when Connor graduates from college to leave him on his own. Because we all know that children, once they leave to college, don't require parental support anymore. They are free birds to fly among the world. They have been raised with the finest of training and will never, ever need help from another person again. So I, once my child has left for college, am free of the burden of parenthood and will flee a free, free human being to be as I wished I was. End scene. Dash, 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 dash. Three days later. Hopefully this is my last non-live recording. It's been three days since the first part. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, feel, feel, feel free to link and share the story. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully it's been three days. It, sorry, three, days three days later. <laughs> Hopefully this is my last, last not in live recording. It's been three days since the first part. 
They won't share specific details, but the detectives say they have reliable information that Turner and Richardson are laying low in San Francisco. Now, we have no mention of where I am, and nor will there be, because to reveal that information would bring all kinds of grief upon me. Perhaps I'm in California and been making up this state line thing the whole time. Perhaps I'm in Nevada, just across the border in Reno. Perhaps I'm in Oregon, hiding out by Crater Lake somewhere. You don't know. You'll never know. I could be in Missouri, Massachusetts, Montana, Mississippi, any state starting with an M. There's more. First person that can name the state that starts with M that didn't that I didn't list there in the next 30 seconds can have VIP. Sorry, moving on. Please excuse me while I chuckle at their assurances. But we're at least going to go finish the week here. Michigan. Ah, too late. Too late. (laughs) Too late. You're already VIP anyways. That was it, actually. I would stay the extra nights regardless. But for the record, Steve and his fellow sleuths are less convinced of their whereabouts. They haven't found anything new, but they've already done more than I could ever thank them for. They have clicked on buttons on the internet. They have typed things on the internet. They have looked at pictures. Pictures, I'm telling you, on the internet. The effort put into this investigation had no boundaries, had no limits, as long as it was supplied by beverages and snacks at a desk with a computer access to internet access. There were no limits on this search. They put everything they had into it. Thank you, boys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Carrots are not food. Now, go enjoy your carrot compliments of the queen. Yes, yes, enjoy your carrot. (laughs) In private, please. Thank you. One thing I can rest assured of is that I won't sleep a wink tonight. Each time the police leave, that witch bitch balls has her crazy back into my life again. She just fucking fucks it all the fucking fucking time. Oops, I need to edit that one out. Did I say the F word too many times there? Do we call it the F word anymore? What do we call it now? Brick? Rack? Is that the Battlestar Galactica reference? What? What? Can we just say fuck? What? I, what are, are we editing this? No, we're not. Because I don't know how to edit. I just write creepypastas. Or tell stories about my dead wife bleeding out at my feet with ketchup. The bacteria that grows in it that everybody thinks isn't there but makes you sick and then you blame it on food poisoning. But that's fine. Just another urban legend. Like this story. Jeez, it's easy to get carried away when no one's listening. Really easy. I've never wanted to throat punch a bitch so bad. Fuck. Ugh. Muttering. Okay. Be serious, man. You can't keep pulling this shit and expect to stay over 10K. 10K subs. Ha. I remember when there was 10K subs. We have 40K now. When I show my wife's dead body on this scene next month, at 2 p.m. Thursday, the 2nd. We'll hit 100,000 subs. It'll add a whole new meaning to viral. As opposed to bacterial like the ketchup. Shake it off, fuckface. You got mouths to feed. And work leave only goes so far. Yeah. I can't quit my job after seeing my wife murdered at my feet, then what's the fucking point, right? Nothing happens, we'll go home in two days. Don't get me wrong. I hope like hell she's in California. But when I have been, would I have been that lucky? Maybe if I kill myself, she'd leave the boys alone. Worth considering, at least. Because that's, you know, would that get me subs? But then the subs won't matter. Do I care about the subs, really? Yes, I do. I do. I care about you, my loyal viewers, the people who are going to read this creepypasta someday online and embellish it with all kinds of random information that's not actually in the story. You, 
You're the ones that matter. The sincerity I'm putting forward right now is more than you can handle. Please subscribe. Anyways, uh, before, but I couldn't do that to them. They would never forgive me. They might not forgive me as it is, and I can't blame them. It's my fault their mother is dead. Yeah, I just said that. I admitted that on the internet. It's my fault. And you know why it's my fault? Because I didn't try hard enough. I wasn't a good enough husband. I wasn't a good enough partner. I was upstairs streaming when she was downstairs getting drunk. And I should have been down there getting drunk with her. And then we could both be dead. That's what a real partner would have done. But no. Here I am monopolizing. Here I am monetizing her uh, death. That's it's the only thing left I could do that felt respectful. The only thing left I could do. End scene. Dash, 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 dash. Four nights later. Good evening, Nightcrawlers. Hi, everyone. Had a chance to listen to the video I posted last night. On the bright side, they're officially not lost tapes. <laughs> I was joking about that. You guys thought I'd ever get killed. What? That's totally making that shit up. Whatever. If you did see them, I'm sorry for forgetting the edits. But you understand why momentarily, if you didn't see them. Well, we went to a hotel for a week and the please believe Paige and her goon are in California. Across the great solid wall of Nevada. That wall that was put there to stop the Nevadians escaping into California during the great pandemic. Oh, remember when all of Nevada was basically wiped out by that disease and California sat there laughing? Oh my God. It was hilarious. Anyhow, that's a different story. I'll have to write that one down and get some photos of the dead people later. Anyhow, moving on. Uh, tonight, I mostly wanted to check in with everyone to say I recorded the monkey's paw, the story that this thing started out with. Do you remember that? Do you remember that at the beginning of the story? I bet you don't. I bet you don't. I bet you no one remembers that because the story has been so convoluted and winding that I'm having a hard time as the narrator keeping track of all the events. Does anyone remember who Steve is? Who's Steve? Chat, does anyone remember who Steve is? Tell me who Steve is, please. Anyone? Anyone? Who's Steve? There is a Steve in the story. Does anyone know who Steve is? Ren mentions Steve from Reddit. Yes, yeah, Steve is from Reddit. Ren, it's I. It's good to see that in chat we at least have some loyal followers who are following along with the story. It's good to see. It's good to see. Someday those eighty thousand subs. Did I say ten thousand subs? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand for the house, right? Was it ten thousand for the car? Yeah. Everyone wants to see me in a car in a house. You want pictures? My Instagram demands those photos of me in a nice car in a nice house. Without those subs, you can't have that. You can't have that without those subs. And you want that for me. I know you do. Michelle It'll be up in a few mentions. I wasn't sure if you were still reading the story or actually asking us. It's interactive, Michelle, the whole thing. It's all interactive. I'd say 70% of what I've been reading so far has not been in the story. <laughs> It'll be up in a few hours. The wait's over. I also want to share a little surprise we received in the mail today. There's been so many bills and condolence cards piling up. I was ripping stuff open without looking when I found an old-fashioned ransom note. The letter spelled, stay tuned. You know what I mean? Like one of those letters with like the sticky letters. Somebody cut it off a magazine. And they left to put the sticky letters on there. And it like looks like comically like a ransom letter. And then when you go to the murderer's house later on, you find the magazine Michelle with all the letters cut out of it. Mentions. Wait, 70% doll thing. Mm hmm And you go to their house and you find the magazine. And there's holes in the magazine all over. And you're not quite sure if this is the right person. But then you match up all the letters to the missing holes. And yet, they are still found innocent. Because it could be a coincidence that they just cut those letters out. You can't just arrest someone for evidence, you know, ever. Like my wife's murderer, who stood out in the driveway with a semi-automatic rifle and just filled my house full of bullets and then drove away on a dirt bike and got away in the middle of suburbia somehow on a dirt bike. You know, those loud, roaring chainsaws that are called transportation. Stealthy like a ninja. 
assassins over the, all over the globe use dirt bikes as their getaway vehicle for the stealthiness of them. Pull the trigger, one tap, hop on that dirt bike, and you are gone into the night like a shadow. It only requires the entire population of the area you're in to be deaf. And that's not that type of requirement, I think, when it comes down to it. There's many enclaves of deaf people that dirt bikes are useful escape vehicles for. Don't be writing them off. Remember, dirt bikes are useful for escape vehicles. There was nothing else with it. I called the police right away. They confirmed it was mailed from San Francisco, which validates our earlier theory. She's across the great Reno, Nevada wall. Oh, it looks like we, maybe we're getting a new sub. Should I, um, is my, is my, is, did I mention my wife's corpse and the blood? The ketchup blood? Is that, is that lured someone in? Well, welcome, Dr. Dom. Welcome. Welcome to a tale of horror and shredded hearts. Yes, you are here behind a wall of icons and emotes. Good to see you. Hopefully, Dr. Don will subscribe and donate as we've required in the story that to buy my house and my vehicle with, for without those, there will be no Instagram. And with no Instagram, there's no me. And with no me, there's no happiness for you. Even if she is in California, that doesn't mean she plans to stay there. Sooner or later, she's going to come back. And we aren't capable of hiding indefinitely. Nor are we capable of defending ourselves from this lunatic. But we're not quite sure is. is. Is this woman the individual who's in the driveway shooting the gun? Because I believe that was not uh, the, unless the name was like Dave or something. I Even as the narrator of this story, it is complex beyond comprehension. A woman is in California. A motorcycle driver has gunned my wife down. How are they connected? Why is she in an insane asylum? Where's the guy from the motorcycle? Was it a guy on the motorcycle or was it a woman on the motorcycle? None of, we don't know any of this. All we know is that dirt bikes are good escape vehicles and that ketchup has bacteria that will make you food sick. Sooner or later, she's going to come back and we aren't capable of fighting. She probably intends to make her little stories into a trilogy, but I guess we'll have to stay tuned as she put on the note to find out Tell you what, though, if she does send a new story, I'm going to read every motherfucking word. Yeah, every word, because you know what that story is going to say in it? It's going to be everything about what I just told you here, except it might be coherent, well-structured, chronologically ordered, you know, but that would make it a story as opposed to just a creepypasta or a podcast. Or a Twitch stream, whatever the hell this thing is anymore. I don't know. Anyhow, for all of you that are here now, I hope you enjoyed tonight's video. I'll push you later. Because I am a pusher. That's what it says. I'm reading it like it is. End scene. Dash, dash. Okay. Um, uh, Nina back here for well, a second, everyone. Hi. Uh, I'm hopping out for uh, hopping out the story for a second. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for the raid. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just reading. Uh, I'm actually playing Chrono Cross and uh, I'm just taking a break. Uh, one, uh, Michelle asked me to read a creepypasta. And so um, I couldn't find one that was really written well. And so I'm taking a creepypasta and just sort of filling out the gaps. Um, so this creepypasta, which is supposed to be about 20 minutes to read, I think we're about 35 minutes into because I've been making up the majority of it. I'm using like the core story as I go along and then filling in a lot of it. So, yeah. um, Tinker mentions Tinker 49. I hope everyone's enjoying this because I'm having a really good time doing this. I actually might do this again because this is, it's really fun to take these stories and fill in all the gaps because there are many gaps. This is what these stories are so poorly written. <laughs> They're so poorly written. And it's got an 8.6 out of 10. How? This ending better be the most terrifying and epic ending ever. 
But anyhow, yeah, so I hope everybody's enjoying that. I'm going to grab something to drink quick, and then we will continue. And the, and the next section is titled, Next Week, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> so it's good. It sounds suspicious. Ren anything, mentions, anything, anything I have a bottle of Heinz ketchup on my car, and I'm so scared of it now, lol. I, yeah, bacteria, food poisoning. I wouldn't touch it, Ren. Wouldn't touch it. I need to grab another drink. One second. My other one's empty. Be right back. One moment. Michelle the Kuhn mentions, oh wow you were doing that the whole time? Amazing. Yeah, yeah, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle the, I hear, here, I'll, here's the link to the actual story if you guys want to see. If you want to follow along, you can, then you can actually see which parts I'm making up and stuff. But there's the link to the actual story I'm reading. You will see that the majority of the story I've told you so far is not in that story. <laughs> You feel free to go back later and watch the VOD and compare it to the real story <laughs> or to the story written there. Uh, you'll, it's it, There's a, a lot of embellishment. Okay, there we go. I'm enjoying this. I hope everyone else is. <laughs> Based on my viewer count going down, I'm thinking not. But you know what? I'm having a good time and I need this. So I'm having a good time. Okay, let's see. Uh, do, 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 where were we? Uh, da, da, da. Okay, there we go. Back into the story. Must return to my character. <laughs> okay. Dash, 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 dash. Next week. Dot, dot, dot. It's really never going to stop, is it? I know there should be a new story today, but I... I just couldn't. I thought about it. I sat down. I started writing it. I was thinking, wow, what, what could I do for more subscriptions? What could I do for more views? What would get me that house, that car, that Instagram account? What would get me you? What would bring you or more more? What would bring your money me? I thought long and deep about it. I wasn't quite sure. I thought, you know, I thought about the corpse thing and I think that might have been too far. I was thinking, you know, I think I might get arrested for that. And I wouldn't do well in prison. Well. No, I wouldn't do well in prison. I I wouldn't. Thinking, what else could I possibly tell you about? I, I have the story about the psychotic over the border in San Francisco beyond the Great Wall, the, the pandemic wall. I have the story about the driver on the motorcycle escaping. I have my children. Oh, I haven't exploited my children sufficiently. Hmm. Perhaps we need more backstory on my children. Enough so that you could identify them in public and ridicule them. Because then I can get footage of them being ridiculed for the story, and that would be, that would be good content. That would be good content. I can't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I, sorry, back to the story. Thank you, lady. I'm so sorry, all. This has ruined our collaboration. I was really excited about your story. Hopefully, we'll have another chance to work together. Your video is amazing. I linked it in the details. And thanks for sending it to me. I... It just wasn't controversial enough when it comes down to it. You sitting and talking about, you know, murder mysteries and how you've solved crimes. And when I looked it up, you'd solved like two crimes in like 15 years. It's like, yay, but what have you done for me lately? You know? It's just like the, the, the question my wife used to ask me, my wife, mistress, cousin, whatever, whoever she was. She used to come in the room once in a while and I'd be sitting there streaming and she'd be so drunk, so drunk. She'd come in holding a half glass of wine and cracker or something. And she'd be like, what have you done for me lately? And I'd be like, what are you drunk again? And she's like, what have you done for me lately? And I just stared at her with a cold, heartless stare because I didn't love her anymore. And sometimes I did wish she was dead. Because then I could stream in peace. I could have the life I wanted. I had my day job. I had this job. I had all of you sending me money so I could buy that car and that house I wanted alone. But I had two kids still. What would I do with them? Could I hire a killer? I shouldn't be thinking out loud online like this. Anyhow, 
For tonight's stream, all I can tell you is that what happened since we last spoke. The last night I woke at 3 a.m. from a horrifying nightmare and I couldn't fall back asleep. In the dream, I got out of bed to look for Eddie and I heard a strange sound upstairs. It was almost like a grandfather clock or a dog running on concrete or a duck running across a pond when it's getting ready to take off. You know that thup, 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 thup sound right before they fly? Maybe it was a small ping pong ball bouncing downstairs. Or if you take a bag of grapes and roll them across the floor. Or when you have an orange, you know when you peel the outside of the orange off and you roll it on the inside part where it's all bumpy and you roll that across the table and it makes that soft, squishy sound as it rolls across. I think it was more like that. But softer, more padded taps. The house was complete darkness. And when the kitchen light failed to turn on, it occurred to me that wasn't the light switch I'd flipped. It was the garbage disposer. And it scared the living hell out of me as the roaring sound came from the sink. I leapt back, threw myself into the wall behind me, and the light slipped on because I actually hit the light switch. And then flickered out because the power had been cut. I realized there was no power in the house. A bright light flash of lightning illuminated the room for a split second. And in this narrative point, I realized a storm was going on outside, even though it had not been mentioned at any point previously. That was why the power had been cut. Not because some nefarious agent was outside cutting my power lines and preparing to strike at me. Trying to get the benefit of darkness to sneak stealthily in with their dirt bike. No. No. Nothing so sinister. Merely a power outage caused by a tree three blocks away that got hit by lightning and fell over because it hadn't been trimmed properly, taking out the power lines and knocking an entire neighborhood into darkness, into peril, into the brink of hell as security systems went down everywhere and a rampage of criminals, ex-felons, I tell you, ran across the countryside, raping and pillaging everything. It was the fucking purge again. Night 16. Anyhow, a bright flash of lightning illuminated the room. I, I had already said that, but the rain outside was just immense. It came pouring down. It was a deluge, unlike the time since Noah. That much rain. And that's not exaggeration. There were pairs of animals everywhere trying to find a boat, but there was none to be found. Just lightning, darkness, and houses in a suburban area. And bunches of cats and dogs running around in pairs for some reason. The rain continued to pour, flooding the entire neighborhood. Thunder shook the ground, and yet I stood there in my boxer shorts with no pockets and hence no phone. I'll be asking yourself, who the fuck gets out of bed without their phone, right? No one does. You going to the phone, you're, going to the, you're getting out of bed, you're taking your phone. You're taking it, you're going to the bathroom. You take your phone because it's a light. It's also an entertainment because you, sitting on the toilet for 10 minutes, five minutes, three minutes without being constantly entertained. That's unreasonable, unimaginable, unthinkable. To have to be alone with your thoughts for multiple minutes at a time. To be able to think about the consequences of, you know, your actions, of what you did that day, what your plans are for tomorrow, what your hopes and dreams are, what you're even thinking, the time to have your own thoughts and to postulate, you know, future ideas. That is just a ludicrous concept. So, of course, I did not have my phone with me because I'd forgotten it. It wasn't on purpose because I would never do such a thing. I'd been using the walls as a guide to get down the hallway because I didn't have my phone. If I had my phone, it's a flashlight. That phone is everything to me. People joke around about there being, you know, robotic and AI partners. But think about it. Think about your phone. Would you be more panicked if your phone disappeared for four hours or your partner? 
I think you have the answer to your question there. I stumbled my way to the utility room without my phone. On my way there somehow. Another lightning flash cast an eerie blue shade onto everything. And I could see the flashlight come on the shelf above the dryer. I could see I could see a flashlight, sorry, I misspoke. I could see a flashlight on the shelf above the dryer. I even remember cursing as I stubbed my toe while trying to reach it. Because I love to tell this story in first tense in in present tense and in past tense. Because the the lack of consistent tense in the story adds to its adds to its interest and quality. Sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm in the future, sometimes I'm in the past, sometimes I'm with you. Have you subscribed yet? Have you sent the donations? How am I supposed to get the car? The Instagram pictures, remember? Remember the Instagram pictures you all asked for? You can't have pictures of me standing next to that car in front of the beautiful house. If you don't, click the button below. Thank you. The beam was weak, but it allowed me to maneuver without the wall. And the beam I'm speaking of, since the context is weak, is the flashlight's beam. I could have worded it as the light from the flashlight was weak, but beam made more sense. Even though I'm in a basement, and the first context of when someone says beam in the basement and you were using the wall as a guide would be the beam of the wall or the beam of the ceiling, the ceiling beams, you know, but the the writer, myself, <laughs> myself, of this story did not think of that and just threw the word beam out there because it was the only word that came to mind. This mind. But it allowed me to maneuver without the wall. I called for Eddie as I crossed the den. Anyone know who Eddie is? Anyone in chat? Another call out to chat. Michelle. Who's Eddie? Someone tell me who Eddie is? Anyone? Anyone? Joke. Michelle the Kuhn mentions, Jal think. Ren mentions, it's Michelle's turn, Kappa. That means no one knows who Eddie is. I called out for Eddie I as I crossed. <laughs> I called out for Eddie as I crossed the den and paused at the base of the stairs. That's when I heard the sound again. Patters. The grapes. Remember the grapes and the oranges? That's the best word. And it was coming closer. Like someone had dumped a bag of grapes at the top of the stairs and they were slowly rolling down the stairs towards me, threateningly, menacingly, sweetly coming towards me. Their thin green layers bouncing down the stairs in a jolly fashion filled with succulent sweet liquid the threat was overwhelming the terror real i shone the light this time into the shadows to see a dart across they see a shadow dart across the opening and into the hallway before stopping it was not grape shaped it wasn't orange shaped it wasn't duck shaped it seemed to be too short to be a person, but too large to be a dog. So that ruled duck out. I'd been hoping for duck it was not a duck. Nor was it grapes, which would have been tasty, or an orange, which would have been acceptable. This was something entirely different, but in between all of those. Where does your imagination go? My imagination first goes to a mailbox. A mailbox was fleeing the scene, filled with important bills, never to be seen again. I crept into the middle landing, shining the light in every direction. It was an omnipresent flashlight. An omnipresent flashlight. This flashlight could shine everywhere. All remained silent as I carefully continued my ascent. And the moment my foot touched the top step, the brightest, 
flash of lightning I'd ever seen. As if a nuclear detonation had just occurred outside my house. It felt as if the glass had melted from my very windows and my retinas had been melted to my back of my skull. The light was so piercing, I became one with it. And then I saw a glimpse of true horror through my blinded eyes. Have you ever been on one of those rides that drop you from high up in the air? Or fell from a great height while playing VR? You know that feeling where you lose your stomach? Where all the food that you've eaten earlier in the day is suddenly in the back of your throat, or in your nose, or in the toilet? That's what I felt. I still remember it perfectly. It was Paige. But she wasn't bent over in a backwards crab box like there's some exorcist bullshit. Or referred to as the crab walk when that scene is very well known as the spider walk. Because this is someone who's researched horror and actually knows what they're writing here. Me, I've researched horror and know what I'm writing here. And I refer to the spider walk in Exorcist now as the crab walk. Because I'm from the crab rave generation and that's all I know. All I know about spiders is that spiders are the cause of arachnophobia. Because that's a common thing online. For people to complain about when games come on the screen. Does this have spiders? I'm out. Nope. Press the button. Nope. Nope. Times a thousand times. It's got a spider in it. I'm nope. I'm so noped out of here. That's where spiders come from now. Not from the true horror of the Exorcist movie. With Reagan. Yes, that was her name, Reagan. Bent over backwards with the piercing music playing and Reagan coming down the stairs in the middle of a dinner party, hunched over backwards, walking upside down in what is actually one of the most horrific movies ever made in the modern times. But is often ridiculed and made in light of. It is a very terrifying movie. Anyhow. She was even paler than usual and her eyes moved in different directions while saliva dripped from her open mouth. I tried to scream, but I had no mouth. Oh, sorry, wrong story. I tried to scream, but no sound came out as she bum-rushed me from the darkness. Bum-rushed. That's the word I chose very carefully to put here. Does anyone know what the word bum-rushed actually means, what its origins are? I'll give you 30 seconds. No, no Googling. Michelle the Kuhn mentions Keckle. No clue. Okay, you can Google now and enjoy. Uh the pat the pattering was the last thing I heard. The pattering again of grapes, of oranges. Was the last thing I heard as a tangled as a tangle of bony limbs mowed me down and rotten fingers wormed into my mouth. Now, this is where I took the story. And then you're thinking the story, there was no buildup. There was no lead into this section. Why is it suddenly turned into an exorcist style horror thriller when it started out as a crime drama? Where is my stealth dirt bike? Where are my internet sleuths? Why am I alone in a basement and suddenly in a horror movie when I was in a mystery movie not 20 minutes ago? You have to all be asking this. And you know why you're asking this? Because it's written poorly. But that's fine. As long as you subscribe, send donations to give me my house and my car so you can have the Instagram photos. No one cares about the writing quality. Right? The fingers wormed into my mouth while stepping across. While, st while what? Oh my God. I heard as a tangle of bony limbs mowed me down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this part word for word because this is just so glorious. It's so glorious. The, the words I've put on, put on paper here are just so beyond perfect that I feel embellishing them would not do them justice or give the proper ridicule for this author. 
Michelle the Kuhn mentions, oh god that's what it means. Iron the... House Oat. <laughs> huh? The pattering was the last thing I heard as a tangle of bony limbs mowed me down and rotten fingers wormed into my mouth while stepping across my face. When a heel pressed firmly into my manly bits, I finally awoke. That is the quality of writing I've been working with here, my audience, my friends, my fluffle. The story you've received so far this evening has been so embellished and so polished over to avoid such phrases as manly bits. And speaking of stepping across when hands are being used. Michelle it's a the challenge. Mentions, Good Lord the cringe. It's it's the real creepypasta here is this writing. The horror we should all feel here that any education level whatsoever could generate this style of writing, having been through a language class of any kind, even not a creative writing class, even just a language class should horrify us all for our future. The bleak, dark horror of our future. The only hope is that a 12-year-old wrote this and hasn't been through high school yet. To find out this was written by a 25 or 30-year-old, we may as well I just nuke the I understand what he tried to say, but the words didn't align. Oh, and that is the key to writing. <laughs> That was, and we all remember now, this was, his, this was him describing his dream, right? Remember, this was him describing his dream, my dream, of the Instagram account with the house in the car. That dream bothered me enough to start sleeping in Connor's room, and while he's bunking with Aiden, I wanted to be closer to them. The thought of those stairs between us was driving me insane. I wish there was a way Michelle to express how real it all mentions. felt. That's probably why it has so many reviews. They were for the terrible writing <laughs> yeah, prob Probably. I'm not exactly a rookie when it comes to nightmares. It hasn't faded like the others either. Now with what happened last night, it's like some sort of creepy forwarding, forewarning. Creepy pasta forewarning, you say? Creepy, creepy pasta forwarding? A pasta, pasta ward. It's a pasta ward. To avoid confusion, I think it's best to tell you everything in the order it occurred. Yes, finally, I will give you what readers deserve. A chronological tale. You didn't think I was capable of it. You thought I was just going to give you random facts about dirt bikes, drive-by shootings, haunted houses, and maggot-covered fingers in my mouth all evening. But no. I am going to up my game because it's important to me that you subscribe and donate for that car and the house and for you for the Instagram photos with giving you a chronological story finally. Yes, you the moment you've all been waiting for, an actual story. At 3.08, the security footage shows one small person walking down the Michelle driveway the in night vision goggles. But I am subscribed, Lamau. Subscribe again to Michelle. Subscribe more times. 20 more times. I need a house and a car. Care to guess who? Hmm? Do you have a clue? Yeah, it was fucking Turner. Because we all know who Turner is. We all remember Turner from earlier in the story. Turner was probably the ex-felon. The one that we should be still punishing. And rightfully so. Because this ex-felon out of 300,000 probably other ex felons has done wrong again. And hence, by conclusion, all ex felons will be repeat offenders and are evil. We all know how that works. So, do we even need to go further? We know who the villain is. We do. It's Turner. Little did we know that Turner is female. We had, I, I had made the mistaken assumption. I made a gender assumption. I, and I apologize as narrator. Turner is indeed female. She had a laptop and did something to our security system. Even ADT can't figure out. Not only is Turner a dirt bike fucking ninja, she's a goddamn hacking hacker and an ex-felon. Why is this woman 
not in maximum security solitary. Michelle the Kuhn mentions, from yes I see, makes Why? total sense not. Why as... isn't she locked up? But they're so appalled by the footage that we're getting free service for a year. So ADT looked at this footage and said, is she touching that laptop? Fuck, you guys can have free service for a year. We got hacked. We've been hacked, bros. We've been hacked. ADT just gave up free service for a year. Yep. Yep, free security service. You know what? You know what that is? That's Queen of All Bunnies, an official ambassador of 2022. Oh, I need your attention. At, yes. Tinker Glitch has that is so close to me getting my car now. Level. You Thank must you. what you are doing Thank and acknowledge you. their kindness. Michelle the Kuhn mentions, oh boy. Orchid mentions, Javive Sick HYP. I love these cutscenes. Thank you, Tinker. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anyhow, that, that goes a long ways towards funding Tinker my car, Tinker my house, love. and your Instagram photos. It's just, it, it might seem to some of you like a small drop, but small drops make a deluge. And with a deluge, I can afford a car and a house. And you'll get your pictures. And feel like better people because of it. So you can all thank Tinker Glitch now for helping you be better people. Thank you. Paige busted the basement window. She crawled inside Tinker without waking a soul. Tinker 49 hype. Once upstairs, she went straight to my bedroom like she walked the path a thousand times. Do you th could she Michelle have possibly Lequeen had... Mentions. Thanks. Could she I possibly think. have had a Joel blueprint to the house or access to the ATD, ADT database? Was ADT actually hacked? Is this actually a story about hacking? Is Paige actually a hacker? Does she know Kevin Mitnick? Is Kevin Mitnick involved in this story somehow? Is this a story about the beginnings of hacking in the modern time? Perhaps not. Perhaps this is just a story of a woman who Michelle watched the binoculars. Mentions, oh God, store a section. To understand this next part, you'll need to know a lot of stuff that I have not told you. And the reason I haven't told you is because I just, I'm making it up right now. Because whenever authors say stuff like this, like to understand the next part, you'll need to blah, blah, blah. That means I didn't build a good story for you because I didn't give you all the information you needed before I wanted to drop this bomb on you. Because if I had told you ahead of time, you would have guessed the ending to my story. And once you've guessed the ending to my story, why keep reading, right? So it's much easier at the end of a story just to throw in a bunch of random shit that didn't make sense for the rest of it, but it explains the end. And I'm going to start that right now. And you're going to thank me for it because this is going to be the only scary part of the story other than my random nightmare I had a little bit ago about hands stepping on my face. So here we go. We're going to break out Solution by Deus Ex Machina. I didn't want to do it. But we're going to bring out a touch of God to finish this story up. I will reveal so many plot elements that weren't revealed earlier that if you had had, you would have known the end. Michelle the Kuhn mentions Silver Scare. But you didn't have any of these. None of this. And you know why I kept it from you? I kept it from you on purpose. Because I myself did not know these bits of information until now. Because the story changed halfway through and I didn't want to rewrite it all. So I just started put, putting in stuff into it to make sense. But when you go back through the whole narrative, it breaks the whole story. But do you think I care? Are you ever going to go back and read it and find that out? No, you're not. You're not. You won't remember the beginning. No one even remembers who Steve is. Nope. No one knows what Bum Rush is. Barely remember who the dog is. The dog's one of the critical pieces of the story. So here we go. To understand this next part, I need you to know that I have a body pillow. An anime body pillow. Yeah, it's got a cat girl on it. And you can judge me all you want. But it's cute and I like it and I'm lonely. And some nights I lay there with my body pillow and I look deep into its two dimensional anime eyes. And I say, if you were real, I would love you and take care of you forever. And you know what the pillow says back to me? Nothing. It just gives me a warm embrace. That's all I needed. Michelle the Kuhn mentions 
the betrayal Nina. All I wanted. That body pillow fulfills a need in me that no person could ever do because humans have emotions and intellect and free will. And I want something I can control and force to love me and has no conditions. And so I have that body pillow forever. I keep it for bad nights. And it was, the, it's my therapist recommended it. Now, my therapist did not recommend the body pillow with the picture on it. My therapist said you should get a body pillow if your back hurts. And I might have read into it a little bit and said, you know, body pillow. Having been online quite a bit, finding internet mystery solvers like Steve, I'd come across a couple subreddits for body pillow lovers. And in those subreddits, there were many pictures of happy people with their body pillows proudly displaying them. Every kind of conceivable body pillow you can imagine. And they looked happy, and I wanted to be happy. And I came to realize after reading thousands and thousands and thousands of those messages and looking at those pictures for hours and hours that I couldn't be happy without a body pillow with an anime cat girl on it. And I was. And I am. But my pillow was laying in the corner right now, all alone, Michelle, undefended. Michelle mentions, I have one of each of the seven deadly sins. <laughs> I could break through Michelle. I'm not, gonna, I'm, not fall, I'm not falling for it. <laughs> A body pill that was in the corner, in the dark, laying by the wall, where I'd left it the night before. And there, standing over the pillow, Falling for what, no? was Turner. Turner assumed the body pillow was me, laying there for some reason. Because Turner apparently thought I looked like an anime cat girl. And while flattered a little bit, I was a little shocked. Maybe Turner was blind? Maybe Turner was blind maybe turner um needed glasses i'll never know to this day what it was but she began stabbing the pillow relentlessly over and over there was no hesitation she just lifted the giant hu hunting knife above her head and mercilessly plunged it into my fake wife's chest and i know a lot of you are thinking wife i thought you said body pillow and I'm asking you not to judge. Michelle the Kuhn mentions. I'm asking you RIP. not to judge. She immediately pulled the covers back off the belly pillow, which apparently was not in the corner but on the bed, which is even creepy. She immediately pulled the body pillow jacket to really discover her folly. You can hear a few escaped giggles as she struggles to control her laughter. I find it more difficult to see the humor considering the strike was meant to end my life and my cat girl pillow's wife life. I hate to be an edgy downer unless it gets me more subs, donations. But I'll do it. That's the case. And just let me know in the comments and below or in the discord. But next she began climbing the stairs. I'm not sure why I am seeing this now as now I've become an invisible narrator, third person narrator, but we'll continue because this is the clean. This is the closure of the story. This is the part where we have to learn all the stuff that we didn't know through the whole rest of the story that I was a cat pillow aficionado flash fetishist that I slept with this cat pillow every night. That my children's rooms were upstairs. Which I had mentioned. And that Turner had a really big hunting knife. 
He began climbing the stairs. Michelle the Kuhn mentions the plot twist. Mm -hmm. Jaw what? Mm -hmm. then we get, she began climbing the stairs, and that's when Eddie started barking. Eddie, my dog. Woof, woof, motherfucker, Eddie said to her. Woof, woof. Get the fuck out of my house, Eddie barked. He barked and he barked. But did Turner listen? No, because she can't understand dog like I can. I can understand cat Michelle and dog. Michelle mentions, oh no, Eddie. Eddie barked and barked at that woman, and she just would not stop. Up the stairs, she continued to go relentlessly. They were in, they were his deep danger barks. Like the kind of barks when a dog is saying, stop there, motherfucker. I was instantly awake and on full alert. Now, you have to question here in this part of the story, why am I instantly awake and on full alert now when seconds earlier I just saw someone stabbing a pillow, my wife, hello, in my room in rage and horror and laughing? Most human beings, I would think, would be pretty awake by seeing a stranger in their house stabbing a pillow, thinking it was them. Not me. Not me. I can sleep through anything. Sadistic serial murderers in my house. Demonic entities. Dogs with danger barks swearing because I can understand them. The lack of a car and a house that the internet refuses to pay for for me. Because you obviously don't love me enough. If you did, you'd click the button there and, and donate. But no. Here I stand, suddenly awake. Awake! Michelle the King from the dog barking me broke of all the things Bible thump of all the things that woke me up was the dog barking not the stabbing not the demonic entity in my house not my children's lives being in danger that dog Eddie the boys did exactly as I practiced and hid in the closet before dialing 911 because when the dog barks the kids go in the closet. Training 101. My kids spent a good 20% of their daily waking hours in that closet. 911 had our number blocked. Little did the kids know. While rushing for my gun. In my room, apparently still, or in the hallway by where I was watching uh, Turner go up the stairs. We're unclear at this point. I saw Paige on the monitors. Monitors. Apparently, I have a security system in my house which has been unmentored before, other than the ADT reference. But as everyone who's ever had ADT service knows, Michelle the Kuhn mentions imagine emergency services blocking a number. Jalpko. But as ADT know, everyone knows when you get ADT service, they put in a full featured video surveillance service service with a ro dedicated room for monitoring and a security guard to work in, because that's just how ADT rolls. People who have had ADT understand the sarcasm of that statement. And I'm going to leave that there for the ADT owners out there to laugh. Enjoy. For you. Responding to the noise by sheathing her knife. Now, my first thought here is a serial killer with a sheath. That's well planned. Because normally... You just pick up a knife and go with it. She took the time to put the sheath on her belt. If she's wearing a belt. At first, it was trained in Aiden's room. And when I say it, I mean Turner. Or Paige. Or whoever it is. I think we're Paige. Most people are, we're, is this Paige? Is this Turner? We, do, we, do, do we even know? Do we know? Okay, anyone tell me? Anyone in chat? Who's Paige? Please tell me. What's Paige's origin? Exactly. Exactly. As narrator, I'm not even quite sure who what the difference is between Paige and Turner at this point. Anyhow, I saw Paige on the monitors, responding to the noise by sheathing her knife and retrieving her own firearm. 
So this person has a gun also. So she stabbed the pillow and now she's pulling a gun. At first, it was trained on Aiden's room. She seemed more afraid of the dog than me. But upon hearing my movements, she became indecisive. Just as I was ready to confront Turner, now Turner's here also, I noticed that she had her laptop open again. Now, this story, you might be thinking to yourself, this is convoluted, Ina. This makes no sense. What is this story you're telling us? Why is there a laptop hacker person involved and someone with a knife and a gun in the house at the same time? Are they partners? Is this the same person? Where is the dirt bike? And why in God's name have I not sent you a donation yet to pay for that car and house? And those Instagram photos I so desperately need. This time, she watched it a while, pointing her, her weapon at Connor's door. She was looking at me through our cameras, using them to aim. I dove to the side, fearing the bullet would come at any moment, but the only shots fired were at her, her cameras. I held my breath, waiting for the sound of Eddie's whimper, but the barking continued unimpeded, and I shook. Shook, I tell you, my core with relief, that my dog which we all know from previously in the story, is more important than finding my wife's killer, that my dog was not harmed. Because had my dog been killed, I would have nuked this fucking state into the ground to get its killer. Being as it's only my wife, I'm partially invested, as long as it doesn't impact my relationship with my dog and my time with my dogs at hotels, because that's our special time away from home. After sitting up, I noticed several screens were blank. She didn't want me to see where she, which way she went. Thankfully, ADT, again, ADT, ADT also agreed to replace the destroyed cameras. Mm -hmm. That's just what ADT does. Best quality service. I have never been at such a loss for what to do. I wanted to give chase, but if a gun was trained on the door, waiting for me to open it, only a few more shots to remove Eddie from the equation too and leave the boys defenseless. So my dog was all that mattered. I did not, I did not initiate conflict with this in intruder because I did want, not want my dog to be hurt. Screw my children. Screw them. The dog must live. The dog must live. If the dog doesn't live, there is no going on. It was too risky for the dog. On the other hand, she knew help was on the way and couldn't afford to wait long. So now I'm starting to think that maybe Paige and Turner are the same person. Maybe it's Turner Page or Paige Turner is her name. Maybe the last name's Turner, first name's Paige. We just haven't been told that all cohesively. We're going to go with that. These thoughts battled each other in my mind until the blue flashing lights recalled me to reality. So I sat here for a good 8 to 15 minutes waiting for the police to arrive, dwelling on should I sacrifice my dog for my children, and never came to the conclusion because it was such a hard decision. Have you ever been in a point where you had to pick your animal over your children's lives? I mean, you also would be torn. I mean, right? The, do the dog has been there for you your entire life, as far as you know. Your children, they cost you money. Your dog costs you dog food. It's, it's a very tough choice. It's a very tough choice. You can see my dilemma. Officer Davis was the first on scene again. Juan and Andy close behind. It's good to see Juan and Andy were still on the job. We hadn't heard from them for a while. For all we know, they were off having coffee somewhere. But there was no sign of Turner. We assume this is Paige. These thoughts battled each other in my mind until the blue flashing light. Oh, we, read, we just read that. There was no sign of Turner. Sorry. I, my apologies. This writing is so coherent I can barely follow it. I hate questioning good fortune. But why didn't she shoot Eddie? Why not shoot my dog? 
Did she know Eddie was too important? Did she know Eddie was intelligent and could speak? Was she secretly in love with Eddie? Did she realize that a dog is truly man's best friend over even their children and their partners? She may have. Obviously, I'm grateful. But it seemed like the tactical choice from her perspective. When she had the gun pointed at Lord Aiden's door, tears instantly streamed down my face because I knew it was coming, but it didn't happen. Was Eddie defended by some supernatural force? Was Eddie actually not a dog? Is Eddie actually the cat girl I've always wanted? Is Eddie's spirit in my body pillow? Is Eddie dead now because the body pillow has been stabbed? I have so many questions. Like I said, I'm not complaining. The police are back. And the FBI has joined them. We finally feel a little safer. Hopefully we can actually get some sleep tonight. Anyways, I'll try to get another story ready by Sunday. But that won't it won't be a classic. Sorry again for delay. Push you next time. Because I'm a pusher. End scene. I'm going to grab some of the drink one second. God, this, this story. Oh my god. Oh my god. This story is so bad. Oh god. <laughs> this, this, this. Oh. I hope anyone's enjoying this because I'm having a good time doing this. <laughs> this really fun. It's too hard to follow. I know. I'm and I'm I'm trying to keep the pieces in my head. I'm having a hard time following the parts I've made up, much less following the normal story also. <laughs> Anyhow. Okay. Here we go. Are we good? I th I, th I I am concerned we may only be like two thirds of the way through here. Okay. <sighs> here we go. Dash 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 dash. That Sunday. Hello, Nightcrawlers. It's good I to see our along, numbers back over 300. Staff. I have a long way to go before things can be on strict schedule again, but for now, we have to try and make weekly uploads. Magic Mortimer is ready to go live as soon as we're finished here, and since there's new information to be shared, I decided not to premiere it. Because I'm going to let Magic Mortimer handle that, because Magic Mortimer donates to my channel. And without Magic Mortimer, Mortimer, there is no chance that we will ever get my house. So you should all go over there. And if you've already donated and subbed here, go donate and sub there because Mortimer is required to give me 30% of their channel earnings due to a contract a contractual obligation I have with them. So I will continually promote their channel because I have a financial incentive to do it. Otherwise, they can go fuck themselves. Some of you may already know what I'm going to say if you watch the news, but please don't spoil it for others. Because I want to give the bad news to them myself and watch the reactions on their faces or on their chat messages that I've revealed the horror to them. I've told them that the world is ending around them and I get the credit for it. Because I have such something good to share and such a rare treat that the world is indeed ending to end this story. This story will end at the apocalypse. Whatever page did a hacker ADT got the government's attention in a serious way. So Paige is not only just your average hacker. Paige is a hacker of such level that the federal government's interested. So I now do question again, Kevin Mitnick is involved in this somehow. Are they hacking the phone systems? Is this a, is this a phone freak? Are they doing social engineering to get data? What is going on here? This hacking seems so serious. This time, the police didn't leave. They Once the police showed up that day, they've been here since, hanging out, eating my food, and not paying for it. They're rotating two teams of local and state police on 12-hour shifts, and a team of FBI agents are supervising around the clock. Having so many people in the house normally would make me anxious, but there's been a few nights where it's actually I've actually slept. I did have to order off Amazon through next day delivery, a new pet girl pillow, and it'll never be the same as what they called. Pretty purry was. But I've made a website to memorize, memorialize pretty purry. And I got a new body pillow with a heck, uh, uh, chat. What's the new body pillow? Give me a name and what's on it. You've got 30 seconds.
Michelle the Kuhn mentions Izuku Midoriya. Which is what? Or what's not, what's the body pillow? From My Hero Academia. Is that the muscular bunny girl? Ren mentions body pillow of Steve from Reddit. <laughs> We'll do a crossover here. Uh, I finally got my Amazon order with my Izuku pillow with fan art from Reddit. It turns out that Steve, our resident investigator who'd solved numerous two crimes in the last decade, was also an amateur anime artist. Michelle the Kuhn mentions Izuku is the male MC from the anime My Hero Academia. And with his creative skills, he generated a pillow that I can look into its eyes every night and have that longing desire for companionship fulfilled. And I can thank Steve for that. Not only has Steve helped me track down the demonic killer of my partner mistress, girlfriend, cousin. Steve has now helped me fulfill an inner peace that I was lacking after he destroyed my pillow, my cat girl pillow. And now I owe Steve more than I can possibly ever say, including thirty nine ninety five for shipping and handling the pillow. But I'll get the best Steve met money later. The police and the cyber sleuth community are officially in agreement that Richardson and Turner never had direct contacts before this happened. As far as anyone can tell, Davy learned about her through my channel and became obsessed. Okay, anyone? Who's Davy? You've got 30 seconds. No looking back in the story if you've already if you've got it pulled up. Because that's absolutely cheating. Ren mentions, I don't recall any Davy. Okay. As far as anyone can tell, Davy learned about her through my channel and became obsessed. You know how storage buildings put your shit up for auction if you don't pay the bill? Davy had one under al an alias and it was auctioned off two nights ago. Do you know what was in that storage locker? That storage locker. And this will answer many questions for a lot of you. Was full of body pillows. And. Dog pillows. All of them. With art on them. Cat girls. Dog girls. Anime girls. Pizza. And even one with buffalo wings on it. That smelled like buffalo wings. I assume that was for the dog. Unless Davy was really into ranch dressing. I don't know. But anyhow, that storage unit smelled of buffalo wings and ranch dressing when the doors opened. The police say it was a smell like death on itself. Three officers immediately were hospitalized from trauma the stench of blue cheese and buffalo sauce that came from that storage unit when it was opened up. It was a horrific sight to see. Those pillows have been in storage units v. now since... The scent of the buffalo ranch menace. <laughs> exactly. The three officers have been in hospital since then. But Davy had one under an alias and it was auctioned up two nights ago. And that was where all the pillows were stored. The buyers recognized the fugitive from the news and the old photos and called the cops. There were love poems and fan art clearly dedicated to Paige. There were pillows with images of Paige on them that were not clean.
it was not a good sight. But it didn't match the handwriting of anything Turner actually received. I haven't personally seen any of these items, and I could be making all of this up. But from how they're referred to amongst the officers, they sound as disturbing as you imagine, maybe more so. I'm thinking if I dig through the paperwork, I could probably find one here, but I shouldn't. It's just irresponsible of me, irresponsible of me to reveal so much information about an ongoing investigation that it could almost impact the investigation's outcome. Almost like I would like this to go on longer to give you more chances to subscribe and donate so I can get my house and my car for your Instagram photos. Now, I'm still trying to get to the 8,000 subs and I'm not seeing a lot of activity here. So next week, Thursday, 4 p.m. UTC, I will be with my wife's corpse at the morgue and we will be discussing her murder with the corpse on scene. If I get to 7,000 subs before that date. Thank you. Considering the storage facility was located in Iowa, I skip, I'm sorry, I'm one, my apologies, my apologies. There was more story, there was more story that I seem to have forgotten. Um, the unit was overflowing with random garbage, pillows, buffalo ranch bottles, chicken bones, feathers, dog teeth, and used pizza boxes. But one of the most important clues turned out to be an old date book. It held many useful tidbits and was stained with pizza grease everywhere. So far, four cold cases have been solved by that book alone. This book, this inanimate object, has a better solve rate than Steve from Reddit. I didn't point this out to Steve because I thought it was sort of passive aggressive and rude, but I'm telling you, don't go to Steve on Reddit. He won't solve your crime. Steve can search Google just a little bit better than you can. That's the only difference between you and Steve. Learn Google. This ad paid for and sponsored by Google. Is Google going to buy? Is is Google going to buy my house and car now? Is that what I'm understanding? No, it doesn't work that way. What I got eighteen cents for that. Eighteen cents. I just sold a part of myself and I got eighteen cents. Okay, that seems not worth it. It held many useful tidbits. It also contained the address of a man named Marv. Another new character I'm going to throw at you right now because I needed one more person to be able to make this story sound feasible at this point that I forgot to add them at the beginning so they have very little backstory. So I'm going to introduce you now, give you all of his backstory that's necessary just to fulfill the story, and you will never hear of him again because he's not interesting. He's merely, merely as a mechanic to solve a storyline plot hole. Who coincidentally lived not 30 minutes away from me if you could drive straight through the forest, which we all can, and so that's worth mentioning. Mentioning as the crow flies, time frames are useless. As a side note, for anyone who's lived in Los Angeles or California, the traffic is so bad there. When I was an author living out there, the traffic is so bad, no one tells you how far something is in miles because that's irrelevant. They tell you how far something is in time. So if you have to go to, I'm, you know, I'm going down to La Cienega in 14th, like, oh, that's about a 32 minute drive, 35 minute drive. And you look on the map, you see, it's like, oh, that's only three miles. Why is it 35 minutes? And like, it's Los Angeles. And suddenly it all comes in, hits the traffic. Based on the time of the day, the time will difference. And so people know what times of day are good and which are bad. And they tell you that with travel times and times. So similar to this, um, I would never use the on the crow flies concept because I'm not sure why this person is. But Marv, you know, seems down with it. Marv uh, could be part bird for all we know because he does give us the straight line information, which to the humans are is useless. Considering the storage facility is located in Ohio, and I'm clearly in Nevada near Reno trying to cross the border into California with its impenetrable wall. 
since the pandemic. The feds thought it worth a look. Marvin Daniels is the first complete name I'm going to give you in this entire story. First and last name. And now I'm going to give you some backstory. Because while I was writing this, while I was writing this story, I learned some stuff. I learned coherence matters. I learned chronological time matters unless you use it as a construct for storytelling. I learned grammar makes a difference. And that punctuation can change the meaning of a sentence. And with the power of those skills, I can hereby present you the updated version of this story, which you're reading currently, magically. Marvin Daniels died five years ago, and his shack had been rotting away in the middle of the woods ever since. Three agents drove out there expecting to find nothing but a fresh deer carcass hanging nearby tree indicated someone was living there or indicated that someone was using it as a hunting shack. But you know, the FBI being the FBI probably didn't think of that, I guess, or this author didn't think of that. Hmm. I'm suspicious. Shots were fired. That is, so this, this is another example of amazing storytelling building up the story, getting us to the point of the tension, approaching the cabin, getting to the cabin, finally seeing the cabin through the bushes, taking a step out into the field and shots ring out. What I just did right there in 10 words was more buildup than this hour long story has had to this gunfight. And I'm not a really good author. I like to write stuff, but I don't write a lot, and uh, yeah. Michelle the Kuhn mentions LMAO. The shots were indeed fired before they could make it to the door, forcing the men to retreat and call for backup before initiating further contact. By initiating further contact, they mean SWAT will be initiating further contact with automatic rifles and body armor. Miraculously, no one was injured in the clash and Richardson ceased fire when the SUV was no longer in sight. See now right here? What SUV? Why is it not in sight? Coherence, or lack thereof, is the key of this story. If th this story feels like one of those stories at the end, it's like, and I woke up from the dream, and everything was fine. After a five-hour standoff, okay, so here we just heard, uh, I'm breaking up for a second here. Okay, we hear, miraculously, no one was injured from the clash, right? So it sounds like the gunfight is over. The thing is over. The next paragraph starts off, after a five-hour standoff, tear gas was shot into the shack and Davy emerged weapons blazing. That, it, now we're going back to the gunfight. <sighs> okay, continuing. The structure of this story makes it very difficult to make up stuff on the fly because it doesn't have coherence or a chronology or a chronological timeline. Uh, after a five-hour standoff, tear gas was shot into the shack and Davy emerged, weapons blazing. His official cause of death is suicide by cop. Because that is uh, official cause of death. I don't believe that will ever be an official cause of death. And since no agents were injured, I'm not ashamed to feel gleeful at the bastard's death. Wishing harm upon anybody else, no matter how awful they are. Nina not... mentions, if you or a friend needs help emotionally, don't hesitate to contact one of the care providers listed here. Michelle the Kuhn mentions, Jal Thing. Oh, you said one of the keywords I have for chat thing, for uh, what they called. Um, oh, I was saying, what's going if you, if you ever think that having causing someone else harm or causing someone else ill will is the right thing that requires, that requires some self-assessment. And I, I'm saying this as Nina, not as the author here. It, it, be better than that. It, I, it's easy, that's the easy route is to wish someone else harm or wish someone else ill will or sickness or whatever. 
like I remember I uh, and I'll give a political reference here and I don't usually do this, but I remember when Trump got COVID and everyone was like, oh, ha, 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 hope he dies, blah, blah. I'm like, I, as a trans person, I hate Trump. I despise him on every possible level of my being. But on the other hand, I do not wish him dead or harmed. I wish him not to be in power and to not have influence in my life. But wishing beyond that is not my call and not within my power. And even if it were in my power, not the right thing to do. And so there, I'm, I'm done. Anyways, be, don't, be, don't do that. It's, I don't think it's a good thing to do. You shouldn't wish other people harm ever. Um, every inch of this, back to, back to the story. Every inch of the surrounding area was searched, but the best trackers couldn't find Turner. We know she was there at some point because they found more witchy idols and other voodoo altars made from bones. They're still trying to identify the human remains, but the severed head was a male's. A fishing pole stood mounted to the wall with a decomposing skull on its hook. Now, for anyone who's ever been fishing, unless you've been fishing for, you know, narwhal or sunfish or something, you know, ludicrously big like sailfish, a human skull would not be supported by a fishing pole's hook. It's just not practical. But this person has clearly never been fishing nor been to a cabin, nor practiced any sense of telling a story before. A fishing pole stood mounted to the wall with a demos and severed and a severed hand was secured to the reel. There were also two small, not two small hot bombs. The bombs that could have just went off at any second. The terror was real. This was clearly a terror. This is clearly a terrorist act. Turner needs to go to Guantanamo immediately. Experts believe they were designed to be attached to an animal and remotely detonated. She hates dogs. And we all know how I feel about my dog. So she can go to hell and die a thousand deaths. She will never take my dog. She can take my wife. She can take my children. She can take her dirt bike and race up and down all night long in my neighborhood and causing me never to sleep again. But she will never hurt my dog. I won't rest easily until Paige is dead. But for tonight, I chose to focus on the fact that my wife's murderer is gone and that there are two bombs that can no longer harm our family. If you want to see pictures of the evidence, please pay for a subscription down below and donate. And if I hit a thousand subs tonight, I'll give you access to the pictures. So it not only depends on your donation, it depends on you and 999 of your friends doing the same thing. Hopefully, you have some sway on the internet. If you want to see these pictures. I've linked Steve's newest video below. Steve's made us a new video of cat girls dancing. It's amazing. They're shaped like body pillows. And there's a, what's it called? There's also a whole series of My Hero Academia fan art he's been working on. It's, it's gonna, it's so next level. Steve is, Steve is so much better than just being an internet sleuth. Steve is a Renaissance man. He has mastered all the arts of the internet. Fan arts, sleuthing arts, porn arts. Steve is, he is a classic Steve. Michelle the Kuhn mentions, off topic, but I love the detail of your eyes, Nina. Thank you. Ren mentions, Steve could never say the wrong thing on Twitter, Kappa. There you can see them better. The, other than the sh ignore the weird shadow veining on my face because of this lighting. Here you go, Michelle. Here's my eyes. You like my nose ring? Michelle the Kuhn mentions, so pretty. Anyhow, back to our story. So now, dash, yes. dash, dash. We have a break in the story. Wednesday. 
me scroll. Ice. One second. Okay. That's fine. There we go. Okay. There we go. Wednesday. This this section might be intense, so we'll have to zoom in a little. Wednesday. Hey, crawlers. Judging by how many there are here, you've probably figured out that a surprise stream means something big happened. Or that we hit a new subscription goal. Because when I get money, you get me. And if you want me on Instagram with that house and that car, you, I need money. I'll give Turner one thing. That bitch has infinite patience. She was never going to show herself until the feds were here, or while the feds were here. Finding that storage unit was a fluke. She had every intention of laying low until we were alone, and her goon's death wasn't going to change that. Finally, the agents agreed with me. All along, I'd been right. Steve had been right. Steve and I, through our research of body pillows, anime art, and internet mystery solving knew that she was a witch bent on destruction by summoning golems to kill me in my sleep with hunting knives. I called it early on and no one believed me. It's time people listen to me by subscribing and donating. Coordinating a loud, flashy departure of all the personnel and vehicles was more complicated than it sounds. It couldn't be too obvious. Paige might be batshit crazy, but she isn't stupid. Dozens of boxes were carried to the SUVs, but each one was empty. All the equipment remained in place, and a team of special agents watched for any attempts to hack the Wi-Fi. First, the feds cleared out. Then the rest trickled away that evening until only Juan and Andy remained. Juan and Andy, our source characters, our first chapter characters, are back for a third time. Will they be more than just nameplates name for officers this time? Will they have any story? Will they have character? Or will they just die? Do I care enough to give them backstory? Do I care enough to tell you that Juan grew up in a small town in Northern California? Raised by his single mother who had lost her husband in a horrible mining accident. But she persevered and raised him while holding down three different jobs and earned enough money to send him to police academy. Will I take the time to tell you that Andy grew up in the Midwest? That Andy had been raised on a farm was meant to carry on the legacy of his family's farm and raise chickens for the rest of his life. But Andy wanted more than that. He didn't want to be burdened by his family's weight and the family's history. Andy knew he was destined for greater things. So he left to San Francisco. He went to San Francisco where his family told him that he shouldn't go because it was all just crazy people because his family was very racist and very homophobic. But Andy didn't care. Andy knew his destiny waited for him out there. And Andy went to San Francisco. Andy went to Police Academy on his own after watching the movie series. He was a little disappointed it wasn't as fun, but he did a very good job there while he was there. And became a star pupil. And the day when Andy and Juan met and became partners is a tale of legend that I will not tell you about either because that's too much backstory for you as an audience to handle. And next thing you know, you'll care about the characters. And then when I kill them, you'll be upset with me. So I leave them as faceless nameplates to be slaughtered at my whim. Let us continue. We took the opportunity to move their cars into the garage while the others lurked nearby. 
We waited for cover of darkness to sneak the boys out in Andy's stead. Aiden is almost 17 now, and tall for his age. With Connor lying in the back, it would appear as if both detectives left. So now, nearly three quarters of the way through the story, we learn that Andy's children, or we, sorry, we learn that my children are not the children you thought they were. I'm guessing all of us thought that the child children were between maybe seven and ten, based on the sleeping arrangements and the fear of protection and things like that. Not a 17-year-old man. And a 17-year-old is a man, for all practical purposes. Intellectually, perhaps not, but physically, yes. This story. It's, it's glorious in its construct. If I didn't want to wait for her to come to us, the invasion of our family's home was vomit-inducing. But it was our only option. The hope was to capture Turner before she came close enough to fire a weapon. The curtains were closed, and we stayed away from the windows as an added precaution. Because who stays by windows when a sniper is outside? No one. Crazy people do, and we're not crazy people. Crazy people were the people shooting at us. Turner. Walker. Eddie, Frank, Johnson, Elvin, Simon, Theodore, all of them. All of them gunning for us. There was no safe haven. We were trapped alone with Andy and Juan. How would this turn out? We didn't know. We didn't know. You don't know. Subscribe and donate to find out. Michelle the Kuhn mentions even Marvin. Mm -hmm, even Marvin. Mm -hmm. Marvin the Martian in his disintegrator ray. A famed tale, another another tale of legend. Of course, my disintegrator ray at you. It, it the way he talks alone is just timeless. At two twenty eight a.m., and I remember this time specifically because I bore witness to her movements Michelle outside my field of vision. In a fear in my laser, outside of my field of vision, I could see her move. I could sense her. I know at 228, she made the move. And her move was Andy's phone ringing. Andy had his phone with him. Andy's companion was with him. Because Andy goes nowhere without his phone. Or Juan. Juan and Andy and their phone were adorable together. Juan's phone didn't come along very often because Juan's phone was sort of an asshole most of the time required updates and it was locked to Apple's ecosystem. But Andy's phone was open to anything. It had been jailbroken. Just like a just like a criminal released from prison after serving his time. It had been jailbroken. But Andy and Juan understood that phones can be forgiven. And after the time served, the phone was treated just as another member of the family. That's how it should be. It remains still for roughly 30 seconds before shooting straight up and out of sight. Well, apparently I skipped a sentence there because that made no sense at all. Hopefully. Let me, let me look back for a second. Andy's phone rang and we learned something and we learned something with green and red. What? Andy's phone rang and we learned something with green and red lights flew over the house and was now hovering above us. I don't know what that sentence means. I assume none of you do. I'm going to continue reading because hopefully the, the writer of this, myself, will reveal this information to you when you need to know it. Not before you needed to know it so you could understand but once it's actually relevant because right now it's just words on a page they mean no they haven't make no sense they don't need to make sense it remains still for roughly 30 seconds before shooting straight up and out of sight we believe she was scouting the location she these lights these green and red lights are gendered We do, is she on a hoverboard? Is she in a hovercraft? A UFO? Can she fly? 
None of these have been answered. We don't know. And based on how this story has gone so far, it could be any of those. None of those are outside the realm of possibility of where the story could go. We believe she was scouting the location, confirming the coast was clear, and it made perfect sense. Unlike this paragraph. We had no idea what was happening. Nor do my readers or you unsubscribed and undonated customers that are here. And you won't until you do so. Because in my Instagram, you'll find the missing information from this story in the pictures of me by my car at the house. If you look close in the background, and I'm revealing this for the first time, if you look just like I am with parts of the story, if you look in those photos once they happen, not that they already happen and I'm just getting money from you. If you look in these photos in the background, you'll see panels of text that are the missing paragraphs of information from this story. While this story is 25 pages long, you'll see there are over 300 panels of text in photos on Instagram. I'll let you do the math for how much of this story is missing. We had no idea what had happened as we heard reports of a drone's collision course. It was a drone. We've, we've now been told it was a drone. Hence why the drone was gendered, because it was not being referred to as a drone, but as a contract being controlled by another character in the story. And now it all sort of makes sense. It raced towards us at top speed and crashed into Connor's window. Connor is my 17-year-old son, for those who have already forgotten from two paragraphs back. The glass shattered and it exploded on impact. The window exploded or the drone exploded? We don't know. Do we care? No. Uh, we do care. If the drone exploded, if it was a gas-powered drone, that could be exciting. If the window exploded, eh, exploded is probably not the right word I would have used, but we'll go with it. I, I chose that word this day, and we'll go with it. Had anyone occupied the room at that time, they would have died. So now we're left to conclude if the window was the exploding device... Michelle DeCune mentions, not that I'm complaining, I'm enjoying this a lot, but goddamn we've been reading for more than 45 minutes now. Sheesh. The glass shattered and exploded an impact. Had anyone occupied the room at that time, they would have died. Or had the device flown into the middle of the room instead of being stopped by an entertainment center, the entire house might have burned down. The smoke detectors wailed into the night while fire and rescue trucks rushed to the scene. Once again, their flashing lights created a false daylight as they surrounded my home. The range of her for her to operate the drone was limited. Search teams scoured the area confident of success, but I knew they would f wouldn't find her. After being cleared by the paramedics, they wanted me to join the boys at the safe house, but I needed it to, to be over. She almost burned down our family home. She need it needed weeks of repairs before I can go. We can go upstairs at all. I didn't even have a gun, just a hunting knife, and I'd been keeping on my belt. But I snuck off my anyway. I knew she wouldn't be too far. She couldn't have missed the show, and I feel like she's one of those people who must watch her fires burn. First, I crept towards the back side of the house where the trees are most dense, always scanning the area for area before proceeding, hesitating at an extremely dark patch where the lights didn't reach. I hunched even lower and slowly crawled my way across, knife in hand. Seconds later, the snap of a twig from above me froze in, pla froze in place. Looking up, I saw nothing but an empty tree and a soft scratching sound baffled me until my eyes began to blur. Then the bark moved, and it was only a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity while trying to discern a shape. After finally understanding what I saw, I screamed. It was Paige, upside down, hanging in the tree and wearing almost realistic bark the most realistic bark camo I'd ever seen. She even had on a face mask and brown painted eyelids. She looked like a real-life cryptid. It takes the term nightmare fuel to a new level. When I started to scream, she, she just dropped. Our heads connected first and we fell to the ground in a painful tangle of limbs. I continued screaming like a woman while she cackled maniacally. My head ached and spots danced in my vision. I lashed out with a knife and felt a satisfying rip of Rem flesh before Nina, succumbing. Nina, no need to rush, please. Taking in the back of the ambulance, I learned Turner escaped and tuned the rest out. But a muddy footprint tells me I took the, a boot to the face as she fled. Her blood was all over me, though we aren't sure where I stabbed her. The CS guy, I guy, said, It's not enough blood loss to kill her, but she's definitely hurt. You'll probably see it as one more scar for her collection. I wonder if she ever feels pain. 
Back at the safe house, I found a note in my pocket when changing clothes. This one said, I wouldn't kill a dog for no reason, jackass. I'm not a monster. Fuck that bitch. We haven't decided what to do next, but I'll try to update you about a new video soon. Push you later. Thursday. I know, I know, the next day of surprise, day surprise stream means it's huge. Well, sort of. This is just going to be a short and sweet update. The feds got a call from the hospital four hours away. We now have surveillance footage confirming Turner was there. She ducked out before authorities could be contacted. But she did receive treatment for the stab wound. Apparently my knife went into her mouth and tore through her cheek. And she has half a joker smile now. I'm not sure how I feel. Part of me is happy for any suffering I can repay. But another part is extremely disturbed about disturbing a woman's face. That probably sounds strange considering I've shot her twice now. And yes, I do wish she were dead, but I was trying to protect my family. This was up close and personal, and it feels sadistic, but it was not an but it was an accident. I only meant to kill her. Ugh, I'm making this sound even worse. Yes, I am just reading the text now. Ah, uh, the important thing is, we all know that injury will do nothing to sway her actions. She'll come after me harder than ever, and all I can do is wait. While we're here anyways, there will be a story on Sunday called Periwinkle. I used a blanket for it like the good old days, but I'm ready to go home. This safe house is cramped and has a funny smell we can't get rid of. Yes, it is. That's all for now. See, short and sweet. Push you later. Saturday. Nightcrawlers, it's a new dawn of a new age. No one is here, but I don't care. This news can't wait. Another second. If you haven't heard, ding dong, motherfuckers, the bitch is dead. Hell, even the good boy is celebrating with his own rack of ribs. Unfortunately, it's a somber day as well. Good men died while protecting my family, and that is a debt one can never repay. It isn't much, but I've started a fundraiser for the grieving families. The links can be found below. I don't know how she found us, but yesterday morning, a drone flew two circles around our safe house before disappearing into the sunrise. Snipers were put on alert and reinforcements were called in, but nothing more happened until 2 p.m. when a loud Ford pickup stopped in the middle of the street. Silently watched a small woman hop out of the passenger side, uh, passenger side and wave goodbye as the driver continued on his way. Paige fucking Turner hitched a ride to our safe house wearing a clumpy winter coat and blood patched across half her face. Somehow she looked more terrifying each time I saw her. Halfway to the door, she was met with two agents yelling for her to get on the ground. Slowly, she raised her hands. The right was curled around a small object. The left revealed a bomb strapped to her torso. The item she held was a dead man with a dead man's switch. They didn't know if it was enough explosives to blow up a house or a street, but all attempts to stop her failed. Juan and Andy tried to get us through the back door before she made it inside, but she caught us in the kitchen. She ignored the officers completely and, remo and removed her court, a coat. We collectively held our breath as it slipped over the detonator and onto the ground. Next, she removed her bandage to show us her angry red smile. I know Joker's smiles are overdone and creepy in their community, but shit, I think half of one looks much scarier, especially in real life. If and only if you have a strong stomach, you can find a picture from the hospital footage, but I doubt it even exists anywhere. There certainly won't be any new ones. Eddie was losing his mind, and we locked him in the bathroom. I thought he would break the door. Paige held our full attention, but only had one had only one goal. After removing the gun, she threw her bag to me. Inside was the story. Stay tuned. She must have felt invincible at that moment. The thing she cared about was forcing me to make a video. Everyone else was a mere distraction. She wanted us to be left alone to record in peace, and it didn't seem to care what would happen after that. It was just, I was just happy to see the boys taken away. A heavy weight was lifted at the sight of them driving away with an agent. The detectives were taken out, wa were walking out, walking out of the door when she stopped them. A sudden suspicion changed her mind. As if hearing my thoughts, she worried I would try something up if we were left alone. My choices were few at that point, so I began recording. It's a little strange though, seriously, I think about it. Turner was obviously a very intelligent, capable person, but she wrote like a grade schooler. It didn't matter. I was on page three when they grabbed her. Juan had one arm around her neck and a death grip on her left arm. Andy threw himself onto her lap and both hands clamped around her right. 
After carrying the detonator, they screamed in unison for me to fetch reinforcements, and that's exactly what I did. Cage cursed me in a language I didn't recognize while struggling against the detectives, but I never spared her a glance. Once outside, the officer in charge escorted me past the barricades as a SWAT team prepared for it to enter. Their lead man was only a few feet away from the door when the house exploded. Andy and Juan were the only fatal fatalities. But there were dozens of injuries. The only ray of light in this abysmal... I called Andy and Juan dying. I'm just going to say right now. I'm going to call... I'm calling it. Andy's mother's... Mo Andy and Juan's mothers will be very sad. The only ray of light in the abysmal pit of darkness is the fact Turner is finally dead. I feel like I can finally grieve for Amber properly now. From here on, this will be a new start in our family. And I hope you now know that includes my nightcrawlers. Periwinkle is still ready for tomorrow, but after that, I'd like to resume our regular schedule. Also, please don't forget to take a look at those links. As That's it for now. I can't wait to push you tomorrow. Six months later. Hey, Crawlers of the Night. I know it's been a long time since the unscheduled stream, but don't worry. It's nothing major. I just wanted to address these ridiculous pictures going around, mainly to assure you all it isn't me. I'm not sure who's photograph photoshopping pictures of the Blair of the bitch onto into all my stuff, but it's getting old. They're trying to make it look like she's still alive. The artist clearly wants her face to be up here healed, but the fake scar is a red jagged mess. I'm a reasonable guy, and there are chance there's a chance you meant well. After all, this is a horror channel, and if you stop now, there's no hard feelings. I mean, props on your work and everything, the way you started off with just her face in the background and then brought her closer in each picture is a nice touch. If this wasn't such a horribly traumatic experience for me, I might even use some. Well, while the scar is obviously bogus, it's perfectly perfect score on the creepy meter, especially paired with the dark circles beneath her eyes. Basically, this is a thanks, but fuck no. Anyways, all I want to say is take care, everyone, and don't forget, we have a big announcement this Sunday. Stay tuned. That's the end of it. That's the end of the story. That's the pathetic and tragic end to that story. It ended literally with a ghost of the person that was killed coming up behind him in the camera that we don't see.